uh, Dominic and I, we have a paper uh, that we've submitted for, it's under review, but we built this figure uh, as an example of the strategy that we plan to use to manage and hopefully resolve cancer. What I did was use da Vinci's Vitruvian man symbol, what we did. So we have an individual who's, who has metastatic cancer uh, and we're going to try to manage the metastatic cancer and then we're gonna to try to resolve the metastatic cancer. Whether that's colon, whether it's breast, whether it's brain, bladder, whatever. This, the strategy will work because all the tumor cells are the same disease. Cancer is a singular disease of energy metabolism thriving on fermentation fuels. So the way to, 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 to manage the disease, you have to press the, 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 and you have to pulse. Press therapies can involve, but not exclusively, restricted ketogenic <coughs> diets, and sometimes you don't need to restrict the diet, and you can have various, various combinations of the diet, paleo-ketogenic diets. Some people respond better to one type than another. <coughs> Fat composition of the diet plays an important role, so you need to know that. Ketone supplements can be very important as a continual press on the system. Stress management is extremely important if we're gonna resolve cancer. People get emotionally freaked out when they have cancer. Believe me, they get depression, they get all kinds of things. If you're not able to deal with their emotional stress, it's not gonna resolve as quickly as it could. And we use, what is this? We use exercise therapy, yoga therapy if necessary, music therapy. There's a variety of different therapies that actually can reduce physiological stress and that's, that we keep on the patient so they feel good all the time. You wanna keep their spirits up. <coughs> You want to keep them involved in the management of their disease. And then while this is going on, we then institute press thera uh, pulse therapies, which is glucose inhibition. We can take part of that is coming from the diet, but we can boost that up a little bit when we use glucose inhibitors, 2-deoxyglucose, fluorodeoxy. There's a whole range of drugs that could be applied here. Then we have glutamine inhibitors. I just gave you an example of Don, okay, because we were just trying to test hypothesis just to test the hypothesis. So we, there might be other glutamine inhibitors that could work as well. And then we have hyperbaric oxygen. So we have these are all press uh, or pulse therapies. Now, the, the strategy is called dosing, timing, and scheduling. How much doses do we use? What is the dosage? When and for how long do we do this? And what is the schedule? All right, which comes first? This one, that one, how do we schedule this? And in the intermediate periods, we can add back certain therapies to enhance the health and vitality of the person. So what we're going to do is use this. This is a new novel therapeutic strategy for the, for the metabolic management of cancer. And it, it is my opinion that this, in time, will eventually make most other standard therapies for cancer obsolete. Because this is based on the biology of the system, on the biochemistry of the system and not some genetic nonsense of the system. So for future directions, what we're really, kind of this idea that, that we've talked about, and Tom Seyfried, my colleague, we've written and co-authored a review on this, talking about this idea of a press-pulse approach, where a press therapeutic you know, program would be a daily routine of maintaining a therapeutic ketosis range of, uh, and Tom Seaford uses the glucose ketone index. If your glucose level is three millimolar and your ketone level is three millimolar, you would have a glucose ketone index of one. If your ketones were, if your glucose was four and your ketones were two, you would have a glucose ketone index of two. We feel that keeping into that one to two range, if you look at all the animal model studies, especially for seizures, it's extremely therapeutic. And it knocks down, it hits all those pathways that I just showed you that target cancer metabolism. Uh, the drug metformin conceivably could be used continuously. I think Tom's teethered a little bit resistant against metformin. It may have some side effects, but exercise, meditation, these things can help you get an ideal glucose ketone index, which we know, uh, we talk about the metabolic zone. So you bring glucose down to the level of ketones and ketones up. If you stay within that zone, we know experimentally in animal models, and I think the human data will show this, and some of it points in that direction, that you are at the very least slowing, taking the foot off the gas pedal of cancer growth for the cancers that are responsive to, uh, that have the Warburg effect, or have a Warburg phenotype, we say. 
but that sets the stage for other, other treatment options to be used. And our idea is to use them in an on and off fashion, three weeks on, three weeks off. Uh, the stand I am a proponent of standard of care, chemo, radiation, and immune therapy. I think for many cancers, uh, these can be highly effective and well tolerated. I've communicated with enough patients that they get a much better response if they're on the ketogenic diet and, uh, and the side effects are much less too if they're on the ketogenic diet. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy, we're just in animal model studies now, but it's like the studies that I showed you when I was doing 10 years ago when I was looking at brain tumors and the cells in the mitochondria were exploding and the normal healthy brain cells were not. I mean, that was sort of very convincing to me that high pressure oxygen was far more toxic to cancer cells than they were to normal healthy cells. And we published that observation in neuroscience, but really didn't package it as an anti-cancer effect. It was just like an interesting observation. Uh, IV vitamin C, and David Diamond turned me on to this, uh, that uh, vitamin C is a glucose antagonist. Vitamin C at high levels in millimolar concentration can be a pro-oxidant and it can actually drive redox chemistry. Uh, it can drive the, the Haber-Weiss reaction and Fenton chemistry and it, redox biochemistry in a way that actually stimulates uh, reactive oxygen species production and oxidative stress. So it could be used as a pro-oxidant therapy with or without uh, hyperbaric oxygen therapy, but I think it would work better with hyperbaric oxygen therapy and a whole uh, toolbox of metabolic drugs. So we're doing these studies now uh, in preclinical animal models, and we're looking at breast cancer, brain tumors, and lung cancer. We're looking at a variety of different things. The mice live a lot longer. They look healthier. So we said, we got to put this together in, a, in a, something that humans can use. So we developed the press pulse therapeutic strategy. And this is the outline for that. And uh, 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 George Yu um, is an oncologist. Uh, uh, Joe Maroon is the team surgeon for the Pittsburgh Steelers, a neurosurgeon, and Dominic Diagostino, another colleague of mine from the University of South Florida. We put this paper together, and this is an outline of press pulse. The diet is a press. We stress the tumor cells so they can't grow very fast. So we have ketogenic diets and ketone supplementation, maybe MCT oils or some ketones. We keep the pressure on the cells. The patient comes in, he's sick. He's got metastatic cancer, brain cancer, colon cancer. They're all the same. All cancers are exactly the same when it comes to their metabolism. So whatever cancer they have, we put them on the metabolic therapy. They're all stressed out. Cancer creates stress. When you have cancer, you have anxiety. You have impending that you're doomed, maybe. You know, this, I have something that, especially when it starts to spread, you get all freaked out. So what we do is we use stress management. We have exercise. We have yoga therapy, massage therapy, music therapy, all kinds of therapies that reduce the patient's stress because when the patient is stressed, cortisol is up, glucose is up, not good. You gotta bring the glucose down, get rid of the stress, put them on these metabolic therapies, and then we pulse with drugs that further target glucose, like insulin and 2-deoxyglucose, and then we use glutamine inhibitors, like, like glutathione uh, correction, uh, chloroquine and, and EGCG, I'll talk about that, and then we put them in hyperbaric oxygen chambers. Instead of radiation, we put them in hyperbaric. Hyperbaric oxygen will kill tumor cells as long as you can get rid of the glucose and glutamine. Why you radiate somebody when you can do this? Right? So the patient then starts to feel better. Now, a lot of these people who come in, they're all screwed up anyway. They got diabetes, they got all kinds of metabolic imbalances. All that seems to go away along with their cancer. So uh, and then they start feeling better. They get fewer, and then we get resolution. I don't know if we cure the disease. I don't want to say we cure people. I don't know if we cure people. All I know is they're a hell of a lot healthier than they were when they started. How long they live, I don't know, because we just started this stuff. How, how many, how many long-term survivors? You know, they're, all I know is the ones that many of the ones we treat are living. What, what am I supposed to say? And some die, okay, because it requires compliance, and sometimes these people are not compliant. And that's another thing. I can't do anything about that. So here's our most recent paper that we just published a couple of months ago um, out of Egypt, because we can't do this stuff in the United States. You know, We can't do it in England. Uh, we can't do this. So this uh, El Saka came to me and he says, I'm using your metabolic therapy to treat uh, glioblastoma patients. I said, wow. So uh, these guys, they, it's hard to write. I do that for a living. I've written you know, dozens and hundreds of pa scientific papers for journals. 
So and I, I know how to organize data, I know how to write the data, and I know how to present the information. The clinicians get the data, we can, we can formulate it, put it in the right order, and then we can publish it. So this is a guy, 38-year-old gentleman. He was a farmer, corn farmer in Egypt. Uh, he came in with his whole left side uh, dragging. He couldn't move his arm, he, he, was, he was in bad shape. He was also out of balance in vitamin D. He was tri had elevated triglycerides. He, he was metabolically a mess, all right? So we put him on the key, I'll, I'll show you what we did, um, if I have it on the next slide. Well, we took him water-only therapeutic fasting, water-only therapeutic fasting for three days. Then he went into a 900 cal uh, kilocalorie a day for three weeks. No, we didn't do any bul debulking. Then after three weeks of this, they took an awake craniotomy, and the, we took the tumor out of this guy. And as soon as we took the tumor out, we brought him back on the metabolic therapy, and we used chloroquine, uh, EGCG, hyperbaric oxygen. After three months, he went in for the radiation. And I said, why are you putting him in the radiation? Well, we have to do that, because everybody has to do that. You're going to lose your license if you do that. Don't do that. So I said, anyway, we put him on there. He, he, said that he was prepared now. His body was prepared. So... Um, so look at, we brought his glucose ketone index down, really good during this whole, the, these treatments. Now here's his tumor in the brain by MRI analysis. You see that white spot, that's his tumor. That was preoperative, before there was any surgery taken, so you can see. And you can see the red line here. This red line is shifted massively. That's what I said, the tumor grows in the brain and causes midline shift. The, the, and that's why he's paralyzed. He's, he's getting this part of his brain crushed. So as we began the metabolic therapy, nine, Took, and we did all this metabolic, you can see the, 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 the shift coming out. It's a combination between the debulking and the metabolic therapy and all the other treatments. So the guy, after 24 months, uh, he, and he's still going, he went back working in the, in the cornfield. Uh, he was doing really well, no steroids. We gave the guy no steroids. So it goes to show you that we can achieve a far better, oh, that's only one patient. Listen, it's not, we gotta write more and more of these patients. It just takes time. And, my, and then we did it in Turkey for breast cancer. And this was, uh, we have a big clinic in Turkey now that are doing this. And this is a woman who came in, she was also about 30, 30 something, I can't remember. Uh, uh, triple negative breast cancer, which is not good. And it spread to her liver and, and part of her muscles. And, and what happens is that we now have management. Look at this, she's doing really well, okay? So what we have, we have the choice. Here's Brittany, standard of care, Pablo, ketogenic metabolic therapy. So how many, how many more Pablos can we get? Cancer is a type of mitochondrial metabolic disease. It's not a genetic disease. This is the singular greatest misunderstanding, and it's the singular greatest tragedy in the history of medicine, this misunderstanding about what cancer is. It's a, it's a metabolic disease. It lives on fermentation fuels. If you restrict the two fuels, you can manage any kind of a cancer because they all depend on either glucose, glutamine, or both. And the press pulse metabolic therapy is non-toxic, cost-effective, and it, in my mind, it'll eventually make all of the cancer therapies obsolete. All right? It's just a matter of time, because people want to live. They don't want to be poisoned and irradiated. 